he doesn't win enough, so I figured <laughs> I'd give him a little taste of what victory is like. That's so there kind you of you. Yeah. Um, all right, so just as a heads up here, Jonathan is playing a black green. I don't know if we're splashing any colors here. We're going to see the rest of the hand here very shortly. Um, it looks like it's a mulligan as well. Some sort of black green value style deck. Logan, these kind of archetypes in this specific cube, how do you feel about them? Yeah, so I actually lost to Jonathan in the first round, uh, two to one. And he's kind of got like a, a fun police sort of deck. Uh, you know, a deck that I really like to play and construct it a lot. Um, but yeah, he's kind of got all the angles covered in some way with his removal and disruption. Um, really not a powerful, you know, like popular strategy in cube because you don't take advantage of the more busted things. But, you know, definitely capable of winning some matches and probably a good deck here. I, I, I don't know. Painful yep. turn one to rest missing on anything to take. Yeah, it looks like yeah. they both mulliganed. I think Jonathan mulliganed a five. Corey on six. And then six. he mulliganed again by duressing and missing on a. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, there, there's the Knight's Whisper, though, so he's back. <laughs> All right. Well, we have got Imperial Recruiter Inti Hell Rider. Looks like we're going to put the Recruiter into play. How do you feel about Inti in this cube? Luis LSV had like really only good things to say about it. I even think he made like a YouTube short about it too, right? Inti in, in cube. Oh, yeah, Inti I'll let Gavin is... take that one. So. Yeah, I, when I first read the card, I thought, wow, this like really fits into the cube perfectly. It discard cards for reanimator. It's a good aggressive threat for red decks. And then as it's been played with, my players have gone as far as to compare it to Lelia, and a lot of them are like, it's better than Lelia. Lelia is not even good anymore because Inti exists. They're <laughs> wow. they like their hyperbole, but you get what I'm saying. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah just waxing poetic about that. Fair, fair enough. I mean, okay, so looking at the board here, I, I feel like Corey is threatening some really, really, really scary stuff here, right? Kiki Jiki, Imperial Recruiter kind of things. Yeah, Kiki Jiki can just copy the Imperial Recruiter and get the Pester Might, and it also copies Hellrider, and then you're doubling that effect when you attack so he's got options on his turn depending on what he's looking at looks what like Gabriel is going to get in the way here though what was the nickname that you gave to uh Asika's chariot I'm forgetting the Cadillac Ooh, okay all right yeah, that one from <laughs> the esteemed Corey here when he was doing coverage one time Okay, I quite like that. Ah, check this out. Gris taking care of the Imperial Recruiter, Fatal Push for the Hell Rider, and now the board is clear. I mean, is is Corey ahead here? I mean, is, is, is Jonathan kind of ahead here now? Yeah, yeah I mean, some, Jonathan some is clever, locked down. Clever sequencing with the crewing and then sacrificing the cat. Just doing Playing magic the way I like to play with keeping the board nice and clear and having an advantage here. The advantage may just be on board, though, because Corey's hand is full of action, and these red decks tend to start snowballing pretty quickly once they start to put permanence into play. Definitely could be short-lived. I don't know what Jaybro has to look forward to in his deck here. Like, I didn't, I didn't see any... That's I did see El Elder Gargaroth. Um, that would be a great draw, but... Well, I think Eternal Witness, at the very least, is going to be able to buy back a piece of interaction. So, Something like uh, Ravenous Chupacabra, that's a card that I'm seeing here that could sort of turn the tide. I mean, Asika's Chariot's going to help develop the board a little bit, uh, but really, I don't know, Goblin Rabble Master is, is really scary, and then there's still like the tick-tock clock of the Kiki-Jiki, right? So, gotta, gotta figure out something here. Yeah, two Goblin Rabble Masters, even. That's a Rabble Rabble. <laughs> I wonder if Corey was like really just trying to be a red aggro strategy and kind of accidentally f splashed this splinter twin or if it, if it was kind of the other way around where he was really trying to build around the twin and decided to go with a red aggro shell for it. 
Yeah, Corey was mentioning earlier that his deck was kind of just like a like a amalgamation of cards. And so I don't know if by that I'm supposed to gather that he kind of just like carefully, critically thought it out. Like, you know, where we know Corey to normally do. I mean, he's a fantastic player. But when 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 specific, specifically talking about this deck, he was kind of just like, yeah, I, I didn't really have any direction. And then in pack two, I opened a Black Lotus and and things just like started coming my way. So I figured it out. So I may I may lean towards, you know, we were mono red and then we found a Kiki Jiki. We found a Restoration Angel, a Pester Might. We just made it work. Using Inti to scale the Ravel Master bigger than the Cat Token is pretty heads up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a nice thing about Cube is even like I really like about Cube as well. Even when your deck kind of falls apart and train wrecks a little bit or it doesn't come the way you wanted to you still have good cards and you can still have really good draws most of the time so there's always hope bowmaster is is a strong card but i'm not exactly sure it's best use here yeah it's really hard to tell who's ahead it's it's a true mid-range fight here it just I feel like this Kiki Jiki camping in hand is just going to make such a big swing when it comes down, regardless of what it does. That I'm on, I'm in camp of Corey winning here, but I'm not, it's certainly not set in stone. Yeah, the there's. Crusher some... just trades with Chariot. Mm hmm. The Bowmasters, though, is like a, you know, interesting flash block here it'll be interesting to see how this plays out well bowmasters will probably clean up the bone crusher and then eternal witness will get back maybe grist that's fair i i was on i was with you on block getting rid of that chariot with the bone crusher but well then jaybro would have got back the chariot so he had mapped it out so that he was going to have a good play post combat, regardless. Oh, Mesmeric Fiend coming in from exile. All right, what there's an all time comment I'm seeing in the chat Bowmaster versus Baumeister. <laughs> Classy. Nice. That's good. It's a good one. <laughs> a goblin guide. That is not exactly what you're looking for, but it could be. Sacrifice to Inti for a plus one plus one counter and a look at a different card. Yeah, I mean, also has some synergy with the Rabble Master too. Probably not enough to actually meaningfully matter on this board state. It's actually so kind of crazy. Mesmeric fiend. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say it's crazy because I felt like Corey was just ahead, and now suddenly, like, I, yeah. I guess a Seeker's Chariot, like the Cadillac, is. Uh, kind of just done wonders for for j bro's work uh battlefield yeah the mesmeric, yeah, the mesmeric fiend. fiend off the top uh, with the with the autumn part of the game we can't see that j bro has access to the top of his library and can cast creatures with the chariot active so that was pretty big taking that kiki jiki yes oh yeah really big now that we see this pester might, I wonder if there's any way that Corey can use the pester might to create a little bit of a tempo swing. Cause that's gotta be his only hope at this point. Whoa. Okay. Do you like attacking with the rabble master here? Yeah, I think that his only way to win is to put enough damage on J bro that he can maybe get a little bit of a like he needs to finish him off on the next turn, so he just has to survive this attack somehow, and but really like apply the pressure because he's not winning a longer game, right? Yeah, kind of desperation mode, right? A little bit, but can't blame him when you're cracking a sunbaked canyon into a bowmaster's. <laughs> One does not simply. <laughs> so eternal witness probably just gets back the fatal push to clear away the blocker here 
and then Pester Might stops the Chariot from attacking, but that's still quite a bit of damage coming. Puts him down to two. I guess he can block well, the Pester Might as well. Ooh, okay. Uh, I was thinking maybe he could have... If he could tap the chariot down and then draw away to kill the fiend, but he wouldn't he doesn't have enough mana, so I think we're drawn dead here. Because if he can survive with the pestermite here, get that kiki jiki. Is Splinter Twin in his deck? It is, it is, yeah, it is. Oh, okay. 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 So he right. has the one out. Oh, <laughs> oh. Here we go. You're oh man, now you're the stressing tail. me out, dude. <laughs> Now you can oh, see he's trying. He's, he's like, he's oh, oh man. <laughs> all right. Skills aren't good enough. Hey, I like how we all just sweat. like <laughs> gasped there for a second. Corey included with that mouse movement. I mean, that's probably going to wrap it up here. Corey probably looking, just double checking, dotting the I's, crossing the T's. But Jonathan Brostoff going to take the first game here with a, a very, very, very solid black green deck. And uh, apparently, you know, Gavin, you're, I've been told that this is. Jonathan's bread and butter. He really likes these yes. Sultai or Golgari styled value decks. Yes, he's a big fan of these rock style decks where you're just playing big, well, maybe not big, but just good costed threats, nice interaction package, trying to disrupt your opponent and just get on board, generate value, stay in the game, and then eventually overwhelm your opponent with the. Cards like Elder Gargaroth and Asika's Chariot. Okay. One thing that's kind of interesting to me, I mean, looking at Jonathan's deck here, keeping in mind, Gavin, that when we were drafting, he was sitting next to you. So a lot of these cards, we were, he, we were passing to him. So we can see, for example, that Grief made it to Jonathan. I don't know if we saw uh, any other notable cards in his deck list that, you know, went through your hands first. But I really, really like the way this, this deck list came out. And, oh, hey, that's a Black Lotus. Nothing really to do with it, though, because a turn one, any of these cards, really. I guess you could play a Revoker and a Shield Breaker and just have four power in play. Yeah, just swing. Swing hard, heavy, and fast. I don't know what else you can do. Uh, you could play a Better Reunion, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe the best thing to do is just play the better reunion and hope to draw something to use the Lotus with. I'm going to ask you a dangerous question, Logan. Do you think Corey's hand is a mulligan? No, definitely not. I mean, you know, totally functional. He's even got the, the creature land. And yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely too strong to mulligan. I was yeah, the upper range of... Um, sorry, go ahead. The upper range of things that he could draw is just so powerful. Like, if he draws any of his top end, he's casting it early. And so this hand has way too good of potential to mulligan. Fair enough, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, even even now that I'm thinking about it, especially against the, the discard deck, just want as many cards as you can. But I was, I was going to mention, one thing I like about Jaybro's deck is one thing I do when I'm cubing, if if I can't... If I don't open the busted cards or if I'm unable to get, you know, great combos together, one thing, one's approach is to build a deck like his where you can, where you have a lot of disruption and ways to beat the really busted decks. And, you know, sort of like, instead of having a busted deck, <laughs> try to manage them. So I like his deck as well. Yeah, the, the ambiance that I'm sort of getting from what... Uh... Jonathan is like cooked up here. It's kind of like, are, have you either of you played a lot of vi actual like vintage vintage? Really haven't. No. no okay. Not really. This this gives me vibes of like 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 Sultai in vintage, which is like Collector Oof in the main deck, Leovold in the main deck, cards like Force of Vigor in the main deck. Very like, all right, I'm gonna play like with reasonably powered cards, maybe a couple pieces of power here. Um, but I'm mostly focused on making sure my opponent doesn't get to have any fun, which honestly, this ties back to what you were saying earlier, which is like, I mean, Jaybro was playing the, like the fun police deck, right? Turn one Inquisition, take your Lotus. You don't get to play this game. Yeah, exactly. I think he has to take the better reunion. Yeah. Otherwise, Grim Lava Mancer can just hang off the Mesmeric Fiend. Okay, well, there's there's still a way out here, though, right? I mean, we always have the 
the backdoor combo. And I, and I know I'm speaking like, like a little bit from a Corey's already behind perspective, but like, you know, the, these are really, really powerful interactive plays that Jonathan's made on turn one. Corey does have backdoor outs though. Yeah. It's just, his hand isn't really doing a whole lot. He needs to draw his mid range threats because Jonathan has a handful of threats that will like take over the board. And as the game goes long, that should favor Jonathan. Gavin, how much do you like Phyrexian Revoker as a main deck card where you're like playing into, you know, decks where you have no idea what to name? I am a big fan of Phyrexian Revoker. I think it is a card that tends to be underrated because I, I actually take it fairly highly in draft even just because any deck can play it and its ceiling is so high, like against the best decks in the cube. They're going to have cards like Soul Ring, Mana Crypt, Moxes, and then you don't have to play a guessing game of what you're going to name. Plus, the floor of it is pretty high as well because two mana for a 2 1, not great, but certainly serviceable. It trades with their creatures. And even against a deck that you have no idea what to name, there are certain premier threats in each color. So you can sometimes just guess like Jace the Mind Sculptor or Liliana of the Veil, for example. Yeah, yeah. Guessing in the dark is always fun when they have like three mana and nothing in play and you just kind of pick the the scary Planeswalker or something. <laughs> Especially when you get it right, you see the card later in the game and <laughs> you oh, have yeah, that moment yeah. of, I got you. I hope you had it in your hand. <laughs> I'm wondering if Corey, what Corey saw in game one, like you know, because he has that situation now. I, I He saw not too many things. Chariot is really not great. I guess Grist would be a good dark. Yeah, you could name Grist, or you could just name the Woe Strider even. It's in true, play. True. It doesn't do a whole lot, but... Looks like Chain Lightning coming down here. Pick up from Bitter Reunion, targeting the Woe Strider. I guess the Grim Lava Mancer just comes into the red zone now, and then... Next turn, probably just deploy the uh, Embrith and the, the Phyrexian Revoker. Now, next turn, draw a better card than those. Ah, okay, okay. You've seen, you've seen the timeline. All right. This is really cool. A uh, sort of flashback of modern, you know, Grim Lava Mancer in the mid range battles and then getting replaced by Hex Drinker as the years go on. <laughs> I think um, I would name Hex Drinker with Phyrexian Revoker. What about you? <laughs> <laughs> Sign me up. Yep. Priced into that here. And then can kill it with the Lava Mancer, maybe down the line. All right. Just another last call here for anybody who yeah. is watching right now. Be sure to type frog in the chat to win this giveaway, giving away 80 play points for a Ravnica remastered phantom draft entry. And our final giveaway of the night will be uh, actually a set of the uh, new retro frame shock lands. So one of the allied shock lands and one of the enemy shock lands. Looking forward to that. Very cool. That new Ravnica remastered set is actually a lot of fun. I played the, RCQ this last weekend on Magic Online and kind of that set kind of like went under the radar a little bit, at least for me with the release. And but those remastered sets are really kind of well made for sealed with all the fun older cards. So yeah, it's nice to be able to play with all of my favorites throughout the years. Skyclave Le Legionnaire. Yeah, speaking of uh, Ravnica Remastered, I think there's another limited qualifier coming up on Friday at 2 p.m. PST. So top two find the finalists will get the RC invite. And then uh, next week, we've got uh, Murders at Karlov Manor coming out. And that's something I'm pretty excited about, given that uh, the Pro Tour is just around the corner. So we're going to probably see a lot of like high-level uh, Karlov Manor drafts going on and things like that. Always a ready, pleasure. Ready to disguise all my creatures. Oh, yeah, I'm ready to cloak all my creatures. Yeah, there's a lot of hits in this set, too. We're already 
I'm already in the lab cooking for the Pro Tour. There's a lot Ooh. of potential well, for Pioneer, okay. even, let alone draft and standard. Bunch of good cube cards, too. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I think I think that's kind of interesting too, right? Um, so this is definitely like an older version of the Alpha Frog Cube, and there are probably like a couple new cards that you're eyeing either from, um, like a you know Murders at Carloff Manor or other things like that. Anything particularly strike your fancy, Gavin, that you want to see in this cube and in, in future iterations as it grows and develops? Wait, real um, quick. Here's a here's a <sighs> backbreaking yeah. Torok here clearing the way. Um, Jeez. His hand. Probably, probably giving Jabra, you know, a clean advantage here. Um, yeah, it's going to be really hard to come back from this. But yeah, I'm curious to hear as well. Uh, what are the what are the hottest cards from the new set for Cube? Um, you know, off the top of my head, I couldn't name anything in particular. But I will name the card that has had the most influence. In the cube recently is this broadside bombardiers Ooh, I'm okay really familiar with this one i lost to that card just the other day ah uh, yeah it's familiar. a yeah, powerhouse yeah. you could say lightning helix hmm oh yeah, yeah okay okay yeah but you, you one does not simply say lightning helix. you have to scream it in like the randy bueller voice you know what i mean <laughs> oh my god yeah yeah, you can see Broadside Bombardier is on the screen there. Yeah, this one is uh, a legacy playable. Uh, Menace Haste 2-2. and has Boast, where it allows you to sacrifice a creature artifact, deal an extra couple points of damage here. Going back to the match, the Cory. All right, maybe salvaging a little bit out of this situation. Finds a Sensei's Dividing Top. Yeah, so it looks like Cory was forced to jump with his Revoker there, and that allowed the Hex Drinker to really get out of